Hi, my name is Fernando Jean Kim, and welcome to Deep Thinking, where I ask all the big questions, such as why are we here, and what's it all about. And today I am asking the question, is there a God? So, does God exist? The first thing I want to say in response to this question is define God. Because the answer to the question may very well depend on what is even meant by the term God. If by God you mean some kind of all-powerful being who exists outside of space and time and created the universe, then I'm inclined to say no. There is no such being. The reason for this is that the evidence we have of life, the universe and everything eh, seems to point to the opposite conclusion. Life really does not seem designed. Uh, the evidence seems to fit a more kind of haphazard, trial and error uh, process than a planned and designed one. Even looking at the evidence we have about the early stages of the universe, uh, and especially when we look at the origins and development of biological life, it seems as though the universe tried things out. Uh, when they didn't work they ceased to be, and when they did work they persisted, uh, leading to the next stage of trial and error. <clears throat> this can be a completely automated process. Indeed, it seems to indicate that there is no plan or design going on. I don't have time in this video to go into details about how and why the evidence uh, points to this conclusion. I would instead advise you to do the study and research yourself. A great starting point may be a book entitled Why Evolution is True by Jerry A. Queen. However, the non-existence of a creator god does not necessarily mean that there are no supernatural forces at work in the world. Could there be some powerful, godlike, supernatural beings who interact with the universe? Well, I have a problem with this too. If by supernatural you mean non-physical, non-material, in other words spirits, uh, then I would also dismiss this as dualistic nonsense. Dualism, for those who don't know, is a philosophical position with regards to the mind-body problem, uh, most famously espoused by Descartes. You know, the I think, therefore I am guy. He believed that there were separate substances, one physical, the other mental. Uh, but there are many problems with this. If they are totally separate, then how can they interact with each other? Clearly our minds get information from our bodies, and clearly our bodies act when our minds tell them to. I think there's enough science about, the truth, uh, about brains and how they work uh, to debunk a lot of this dualist nonsense, nonsense these days. And I personally do not subscribe to the idea of two separate realities, uh, spiritual and physical. There is only one universe, and whatever happens in it, physical or spiritual, uh, must be part of the same reality. I am a monist. There is no separate world of spirit, just the world we all inhabit. It's Occam's razor, really. Why posit the existence of a whole load of other stuff uh, that we don't have any real evidence for, when we don't need it to explain what we observe anyway. So does this mean there's nothing that could be considered a god? Well, not necessarily. There are some other interesting ideas uh, that people put forward as a reason to believe in something divine. One of those is the idea that the universe itself has a kind of mind, uh, a consciousness if you like. Sometimes it is claimed that everything is conscious, just with different levels of consciousness, and that all these varying levels of consciousness add up to a kind of universal mind. This is an interesting idea, and not entirely implausible. Consciousness does vaguely seem to be some kind of connectedness. Uh, you are conscious because your mind takes data in data from the outside world, thus you become aware of the outside world. It is easy to say that since your senses merely turn interactions with elements from the outside world, light, vibrations in the air, chemical molecules, etc., into a kind of chemical electrical uh, signal, then what about all those other times when matter acts upon other matter? Is not all existence a flow of information and interaction between different things? If consciousness arises from some of these interactions, then couldn't all interactions be termed consciousness-like? And there and there are different degrees of consciousness exhibited by all of matter, wouldn't then a kind of aggregate of all of these consciousnesses <laughs> add up to one massive overarching consciousness, the mind of the universe itself, and we could call that God. It's a tempting idea. 
no need for a creator, the universe still arises without plan or design, it just gradually becomes more and more conscious. And it seems to neatly explain the, the mystery of our own consciousness, why we are truly aware and not simply very complex automatons. But again, there are problems. Occam's razor, for a start, there simply is no evidence for this conscious, conscious mind of the universe. What's it doing? Why doesn't it talk to us? Also, not every flow of information, even in our own minds, seems to be conscious. There is plenty of interaction, data collection and data analysis going in on, our, in, on in our brains that we are not conscious of. Why assume the universe itself could be conscious, just because of all this information flow within it, if we are not even conscious of every information flow within ourselves? Clearly, interaction between matter does not always equal consciousness. I've come to believe that only a special kind of interaction, of connectedness, uh, equals consciousness. Uh, the kind that involves particularly complex processing and analysis. Uh, the kind that requires a brain, or at least a computer. But what about even more vague claims for the divine? What about a kind of connecting energy? Uh, a weird presence that you, you can just sort of feel when you look up at the stars, or, or spend time in a natural environment? The problem is, when you talk about energy, or presence, the terms are so vague that they scarcely mean anything at all. And those ideas probably say more about our experience of nature than they do about anything that nature itself is actually doing. We feel a deep, dare I say, spiritual connection uh, with nature, the cosmos, the trees and the stars. It gives us a sense of belonging and a sense of meaning somehow. We feel connected to a greater whole. These are wonderful feelings. Uh, but they are probably mostly nostalgia for the environment in which we evolved. Those feelings and experiences say more about us as human beings than they say about the universe itself. However, this is where I pluck the jewel of reverence out from the ashes of scepticism. This is where I retrieve the baby from the bathwater. There is a sense in which God or gods can be real. And that is the sense of symbolic, reverential meaning that we give to them. The word spiritual has two different meanings, after all. One is that silly dualistic idea of, of that there are supernatural non-physical spirits in the world. The other, though, is an attitude of reverence and wonder in the world, an attempt to find a moral grounding and a profound life-changing meaning in our bewildering existence. It is this latter meaning of the word spiritual that means we will never truly outgrow religion. Even if it becomes relegated to the level of a lifestyle, an identity, or an art form. We used to tell stories around the campfire. Those stories grew into the mythology of entire cultures. These myths in pagan cultures were not always believed in literally. The Greeks didn't always believe in the gods, but they followed them anyway. They let their myths shape their culture anyway. And that's because these stories are designed to help us navigate our way through the complex moral maze of life. In that sense, they are akin to art, or music, or literature. The many gods of pagan or Hindu thought can be symbolic of aspects of reality that are worthy of devotion and reverence. Whether they represent natural forces, such as sun, or wind, or sea, uh, whether they represent great moral values, uh, such as strength, or wisdom, or, or compassion, or beauty, or whether they represent spiritual experiences, such as growth and renewal, uh, or a comprehension of the connectedness of all things, or the cyclical nature of destruction and creation. It doesn't matter. They represent things that are valuable and important, things worthy of worship and reverence. They enrich lives. They impart a reverential approach to life itself. And this can be true of a notion of one God also. When taken away from crazy moral absolutes, or creationism and anti-scientific bias, it can represent a belief in a commitment to compassion, uh, and honesty, for example, or an all things are connected concept, or even a when I look up at the stars or spend some time alone in a forest, I feel connected to something greater. Is it worthless just because it isn't a facts and data kind of truth? Is it pointless or false just because it is more about our own, our own human feelings than anything objectively true about the universe? I don't think so. And that is why I say that, although I am rationally speaking an agnostic and an atheist, I do feel there is a place for spiritual practices and gods in my life. Because I believe human stories and myths, symbols and metaphors, and a reverential approach to life are important 
maybe even vital to a happy, healthy, balanced life. Thanks for watching.